Rub up your engines! Here's an interesting vehicle. It's a 2010 Buick Enclave. It's got whining power steering. We're going to go through the whole car and see, is it a worthwhile car? Is it a piece of junk? And this particular one, as you can see, it's got uh, 125,924 miles on it. Now you can hear a little groaning in the power steering. I'll turn the fan down. You can hear it. Hear it. Not bad, but when it's cold, it's a lot louder. And the owner's kind of deciding, is this thing going to start nickel and diming me to death? It actually runs good. It shifts good. It doesn't have any particular problems with it other than the whiny power steering. So we'll go through the whole thing and see. Was it a good vehicle? Just still got some miles left in it? Or is it time to say goodbye? If you look under the hood, it's got a 3600 3.6 liter V6 engine. And they're actually excellent engines. These have sand cast aluminum blocks, but they got cast iron liners in them. This thing doesn't burn any oil. It still runs perfectly fine with the mileage that it has. The engines have always been the strong point. It's these V6 engines when they're made right so the liners take the wear and they won't burn oil because pistons work better in iron than they do in aluminum. Aluminum scores too easily. He bought the cars years ago from uh, mother-in-law so they knew the history of the car hadn't been wrecked or anything. We'll start out by doing a straight analysis because really if it's in rough shape otherwise if the data shows everything's worn out there's no sense in messing with the power steering you just it works fine it just makes a noise here just sell the car and get rid of it and get another car well plugging in there's a data point we'll start analyzing we'll do an auto scan on clay front wheel drive 2010 3.6 liter do an auto diagnosis on a few failures whether they mean much or not, we're going to find out. Realize you got a 12-year-old Buick. Yeah, electronic stuff, a lot of crap might not work. But if you don't care, you can continue driving the car. Like I said, the only complaint he's got is power steering's whining. We don't care about the passenger door switch, the driver door switch failure, the radio. He says it works okay. Airbags aren't going to work on a really old car. Let's just check it out and see what the heck's happening. The supplemental restraint. We'll see what that is. Big trouble code. Read trouble code. Low voltage below threshold. Passenger present module. Health function. That means it's not weighing the people right. Lost communication with passenger present control system module. Me, I would never trust the airbags in a 12-year-old GM. Just make sure to buckle up. The other failures are the ECM. We'll see what's happening in the engine system. We'll read the trouble codes. And what we have is... Engine misfire detected. Cylinder number two and cylinder number six. Now he's not complaining because it's running okay. Maybe in the past it had a misfire and it was fixed and nobody reset it right. But it's running perfectly fine now. So what we're going to do here. Clear all these codes. Now they're gone. Now I've cleared the codes and we road test it. We'll learn a little bit more. See how it's going. See if the codes come back. Could be somebody just didn't erase them. Because it's running perfectly fine. Now if they come back and it's running perfectly fine. Who really cares because engine light wasn't coming on there weren't any real problems showing a lot of times you'll get a glitch a gm with 129,000 miles 12 years old the computer feels every few thousands of a seconds once in a while it misfires it's going to trip the stupid car we've erased that now let's look at the live data see what shape this car is actually in you can't hide from the live data here we go so far it's all blue which is good short term fuel trim bank one bank two it's practically zero it's almost running perfectly just a tiny bit off so that was misfiring so let's look at the misfire data it's not misfiring now that's the live data so let's go to the historical data the history is number two misfired 14 times number four 39 times and number six is 73 times 1640 cycles so it's a very small amount of misfiring who cares it's running perfectly fine seeing how old this thing is it's still got the original spark plugs yeah probably a good idea to change it at some point in time but it runs good enough now who really cares see on a gm these scan tools are fantastic this has tests to see if an injector for cylinder number one has a short that passed it doesn't have an open circuit that passed so if you even have a wiring problem in these this is going to show you now it's good that gm added the status to the system gm's over time have a history of the wiring harness for the injectors having problems i've seen old vehicles man i'm scratching my head gee i wonder what's wrong i know what's wrong but this is 2010 and it's new enough since it gives you this data you don't have to check the wiring this is checking them 
all the time. If it said there was a problem, then you'd know that system had a problem. You could check the wiring, you could check the injectors, but see, these are all okay. So you don't have to do anything. Shows you the fuel rail pressure. You can see what the pressure is. You know, you didn't put a gauge on it. Considering how well it runs, the main thing we're dealing with now, we're gonna road test it, is the whiny power steering pump. So, well, the steering works okay, but it whines. It's like the whine. If you bought a brand new factory pump, the pain in the butt, it's three and a half hours labor. So you're gonna spend about a thousand bucks replacing. So here's a trick I learned years ago. We're going to the auto parts store, buy some full synthetic power steering fluid. Now, as you can see, stuff on the gas, got plenty of power, shifts smooth, still runs great. I bought synthetic power fluid. I'm gonna suck out the power steering fluid from the pump and put in full synthetic. And here's the reason. Synthetic fluids flow better at hot temperatures, but also flow better at low temperatures. This makes the noise when it's low. This will flow better. A lot of times, you'll get rid of the noise entirely. Now you might think, where the heck's the power steering reservoir? Well, it's because of stupid beauty covers in the way. We get this crapper out of the way. There's the reservoir right there. Get my vacuum pump. You can use all kinds of pumps, turkey basters, whatever. I happen to have a vacuum pump. And we just take the suction in, take the cap off the reservoir, and stick it in. And it'll pop the fluid out. Here it comes. You won't get all the fluid, but you get quite a bit out. Then you pour some in, then drive it around for 10 minutes, and then suck it out. Do that three or four times, and it'll change most of the fluid out, or at least dilute it a bunch. So now we'll pour the synthetic fluid in. It's about this far from the top, and of course it's got a little cap on it. Everything's sealed for your protection these days. I think it's more sealed for your annoyance, if you ask me. I find it annoying. There, now we can actually pour the stuff. Pour until it's about, oh, Half an inch from the top. Then we'll put the top back on and road test it. We'll leave the beauty cover off for now. And as I said, we'll drive it around for five, ten minutes and then repeat the process two or three times. Heck, I gotta road test it anyways to see if any of the trouble codes come back. So we'll kill two birds with one stone here. Now, even after ten minutes of driving and we've only done it once, we're gonna do it three or four times. You can see, you don't hear it like you did before. A lot quieter already. Because if there's one thing that synthetic fluid is good for, it's high pressure applications that have to flow. Power steering can be 1,500 pounds per square inch pressure. A lot of pressure. It's got to flow right. And the synthetic fluid, it flows better at both hot and low temperatures. Here we go again. Tuck the fluid out. You know the sump came out because it expands when it gets hot. I put a little bit too much in, but I mean we're pumping it out, so it's not hurting anything. And we'll fill it back up again. Best to have a flashlight so you can see the dark hole. And this time will be more accurate. We'll measure it with a dipstick. So now it's full. Now let's pour this dirty fluid in a old moonshine jar and see what it looks like. As you can see, it's pretty dark. Red tint to it, but it's pretty dark. It's supposed to be real light red. It's dirty, there's no arguing. That's why it's a good idea to change your power steering fluid. If you got a power steering pump, a lot of the new ones are electronic, you don't have to worry about it. If you change it out every five or six years, it's no big deal, but change it out, you won't get whining, and of course the dirt, it'll eat the seals up. But if it starts leaking, these systems are extremely expensive. The power steering pump, the rack. So change it every once in a while and the synthetic fluid works best. So now after road testing and doing that four or five times, we'll look at the data because we did reset all that stuff. And as you can see here, there's no codes, everything's green. It even reset the drive cycle monitor. So as it stands now, this car would even pass an emissions inspection. They don't do it here in Clarksville, so nobody here cares. But the misfires occur so randomly, it didn't trip any check engine codes. The engine light operates the show. When you turn the key on, the light comes on, showing the bulb's still there. Then we start it up. It goes off. You can see all the lights are off now. So the problems that it has are very minor problems. Who would even care? I'd tell them, hey, drive it for a while. What the heck? Prices of new cars are so expensive. This thing still runs. So what do I think? Well, everybody knows I'm not a big GM fan, but still a decent vehicle. Whining has come down a lot. Now, if you do try this on your car, give it at least a week and two or 300 miles of driving for the new fluid to circulate through. Let's say it whines a little bit in the morning now. Well, after two, 300 miles, miles if it stops entirely it fixed the whole thing quieter now you'll find out in the morning if it's whining it'll tell me if it's still whining or not but you want to give it at least 200 250 miles of driving for it to circulate all through because it's not a hundred percent synthetic because you took some out drained it put some more in drained it and you diluted it quite a bit now these enclaves are a big seller 
here in the United States and in China they're even bigger sellers at least judging by this 2010 model engine's still in excellent shape thumbs up to the Buick Enclave at least this 2010 model it served him well and his mother-in-law now it's serving him and his wife and his kids well I'm definitely telling them not to get rid of it because cars cost too much now and this thing still might last for quite a few years so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell